And so shame is like a bubble, okay? And the bubble is around the child. And in the bubble is a reflection of the bad self, okay? And all they see is, I'm just not good enough. There's something about me, I'm just bad, I'm ugly, I'm unwanted, and especially these, what we're hearing, okay? And so when someone says, um, you made a mistake, they can't differentiate themselves from the action. It's all in one. So all they hear is, you're a mistake, okay? That's because they see themselves as the core of who they are, the core, the all of me, is bad, deficient, unloving, unwanted, because of what happened to me, okay? So it's like this. What happens with kids who are living in shame is they cannot take criticism well, okay? Because when you say you've made a mistake, they believe they're the mistake. When they've done something wrong, they believe they're all wrong. When someone points out it could be, I don't like this. They think their perception is they don't like me. Okay, there's something wrong about me. So what happens is, with kids who have pervasive shame, we see a lot of red flags. And that is, they have a very difficult time taking responsibility for their behavior because they're going to deflect, they're going to push it away, they're not going to take responsibility. They're going to lie, dismiss, and not acknowledge that they did anything wrong. Because if I do that, this is what it feels like. So when the parent says to a child who has pervasive shame, go apologize to your sister, because we want to instill guilt. But if we have a child living in shame, they don't know how to experience guilt. All they know is to experience shame. When we force and teach, but what happens is we're forcing them to apologize for their behavior. It's like this, okay? The parent goes, and this is traditional parenting, go and apologize to your sister for, throw, for grabbing the truck out of her hand. And the child goes, I don't want to apologize. And the parent's like, in their mind, I need to teach responsibility to my child. He needs to learn guilt. And the child goes, I don't want to apologize. And the mom says, yes, you do. Because, or else, and then they start consequencing, which is not the parenting I'm teaching you. Or timing out. If you don't apologize, you're not going to have ice cream or you're going to be sent to your room. But the child continues to resist because we, what they don't want is to acknowledge what they already feel about themselves. So the child eventually, because the parent is most likely threatening, consequencing, putting fear tactics, because they're trying to do their own agenda of teaching responsibility, that the child's eventually going to do what the parent wants, but the parent is not going to teach the child what they ultimately need to learn. So it goes like this. The child's going to fight. There's going to be a control battle, okay? And I know there's some families in here that know what I'm talking about. And the child's going to go, I don't want, 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 and then eventually, okay, you're not going to get that ice cream. All right, fine, all right, fine. I'm sorry. There, you're happy now. But what is the child? apologizing for. I'm sorry, I'm so bad. We are reinforcing shame, okay? And I know it because I lived it. I was one of those kids, go apologize. But I couldn't differentiate me from my behavior. So anytime I did something wrong, I'm like, okay, I'm wrong again. I'm sorry. I couldn't and I see this in a lot of foster kids because they believe what happened to them is their fault. So we need to help them separate out 
them from their actions. So it's called the sandwich, which comes from Holly Van Gilden's book on attachment parenting. So there's bread on the bottom. We need to separate the child from their behavior and put the emphasis on the behavior, not the child. Okay? So it's approaching your child like this. If you recognize they've done something that has impacted someone else, we want to help them have empathy, understand there's two people in a dynamic, it's not all about you, but help them separate. You go, you validate them first. We, I love you, you're a good kid, you're a good person, you're doing great, you've been working so hard, all the stroking, 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 all the goodness in who they are. And then the parent goes with the lettuce, tomato, turkey, pickle, and this is not okay. We can't just pull things out of kids' hands without permission. Remember, they have a whole hoop, you have a whole hoop, we need to ask first. Then the bread on the top is, and I know you can do it, because you've been working so hard. You're such a good person, you're a good friend. Point out all the strengths. You have so much courage. Billy cares about you, we all love you, we know you can do this, instilling strength and pointing out their vulnerability. You're so courageous. And it's okay to say, I'm sorry I took the truck out of your hands. I'm learning and I'll try differently next time. Modeling, okay? So doing this over and over and over will help the child go, I'm a good person. What I did wasn't okay. And even us as adults, I mean, Brene Brown talks about, you know, the shame. This is the shame for the foster and adopted child. This is what it feels like. Um, so we need someone to piece that out. And I've had some parents say that was one of the single most important parenting tools that really helped me and it shifted things in the dynamic. Because I saw my child different as not what's wrong with him. It's, let's work on this together because you're okay. This is what we need to work on together. It will help you as a parent to see your child different that separate the problem from them. They're doing the best that they can. They're kids. 